come with us now, if you dare, down a rickety staircase into a dank, dark basement. What awaits the Saturday Night Freak Show? (laughs) Thanks for listening to the Saturday Night Freak Show podcast, a movie review podcast that happens every Saturday night. New episodes will magically appear on iTunes, Stitcher Radio, TuneIn Radio, Google Play, and more. These are the internet radio superstars. Gary. Holly. Travis. And I'm Colin. And we just want to do a public service announcement that this month we are taking listener requests all month long. And then uh, in December, we're going to vote, I think, on the best we'll ones. We'll pretty much either look at the ones that either we haven't watched a million times or the most interesting, you know. Yeah. So, you know, you know, dig through your fucking... Uh, closets for the weirdest movies that, uh, you know, you think other people have never heard of or, or just crazy movies we and want, we'll watch yeah, them. We want a listener pick. Yeah. That's what we're doing. So Please I think make we're going to watchable, like <laughs> just somewhat. I mean, no, don't manos. mention it. Don't see no we, manos. We're not doing manos. Any titles well, we're not do doing it. manos. <laughs> no, we're ro- not. No aerobicide. <laughs> yeah. We're just not doing it. <laughs> yeah. So the way that you can suggest a movie is go to our Facebook page, which is facebook.com slash Saturday night freak show. We're going to pin it to the top. Uh, and, uh, you can make your suggestions there in the comments and then probably, yeah, I don't know. It will probably do four of them, uh, for the month of, uh, we'll do them in January. Yeah. Uh, you don't win anything. You just get your movie picked. <laughs> yeah. And we'll give you total credit you for it. It'll something. be awesome. We'll no, save. come on. Uh, we'll well, <laughs> yeah, she'll give you something like, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, uh, tonight we watched the movie that was chosen by Travis. Travis, what did we watch tonight? Oh, we watched one of my favorite movies of all time, From Beyond the Grave, Amicus, 1975. 73? Whatever. No, 05, right? Isn't that 5? <laughs> I thought it was XXIII at know, the end dude. of it, but I don't know. Well, you're killing me here now. Well, maybe. Well, Let me look this up right here as we're doing the podcast. <laughs> 73, you're right. Well, tell me about uh, Amicus Pictures. What does that mean when you say it? Okay, there's, when I say Amicus Pictures, I'm talking if you're into European horror, there's two names. Hammer? An amicus. Specifically British horror. In there. Specifically British. So like, not like AIP. That's Europeanish with Roger Corman and a bunch of different people. But, but, but when it comes to like the big town, the big guys, well, amicus is more popular for these anthology movies. Mm-hmm. They did, I mean, pretty much every great like anthology movie. From Give us a England. roll call. We were talking Dr. Terror's House of Horror, Torture Garden, The House That Drip Blood. Uh, we were talking Asylum. We're talking uh, From Beyond the Grave, uh, obviously. Uh, Tells from Tells from the Crypt. Uh, the Vault of Horror. There's like a few more. Mm, there's a few more. <laughs> and I'm sure. I mean, I'm sure Amicus did like. Did Amicus do full length horror yeah, movies? Yeah, yeah, they did. Uh, the thing that was always like tricky with them was trying to determine like which movie was a hammer film at the time and which movie was an amicus film because they had the same stars. Peter Cushing <laughs> and Christopher, Christopher Lee. Lee. And a couple but of those were the horror actors, right? Those were the, you know, Bella Gosies and the in the yeah, they were the next wave. And the Boris Karloffs yeah. of yeah. Uh, the seventies yeah. or sixties and seventies. I'm pretty sure amicus... I, Peter Cushing is he's he is Doctor Terror in the first anthology by Amicus and he's in uh uh, well, he's in Tales, Tales from the Crypt, the Crypt. which yeah. was the Grimm's Dyke. Or I think Vault of Horror was the last anthology that uh, that that Amicus did. I'm pretty sure Vault of Horror was like the end, mm. you know, because you had a d- these dudes riding down in an elevator. So this was like a <laughs> thing. I mean, like the anthology horror movie, right? I mean, or having for your buck. having yeah. four or five short, you know, whatever twenty minute Vignettes. movies in, or yeah, short stories in your film. Was a thing, I mean, like, I think we tracked that back to Dead of Night, right? Well, 1945 or something well, like that? Well, I would say radio shows, right? This is the beginning of American, like, anthology horror stories, right? The, uh... What are some, but this uh, is a British turn one. Up, well, but, you know, they had radio. Shut up. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> maybe you're right. Anyway. But you're saying, like, Lights Out and yeah, lights Inner out. Sanctum. And, yeah, yeah, Witching Hour. I mean, yeah, those are primarily... I mean, well, I, mean I don't know. I'm had, sure they had it. Like Twilight Zone TV shows and stuff yeah. like that, thriller and chiller, or at least thriller. Well, I want to say the, supposedly one of the first anthology horror movies is called. Oh it's God. Dead of Night. 
Yeah, Dead or Night. Thank the you. one with the ventriloquist doll. I remember that yeah, story. The ventrilo- yeah, I want to watch that from 1945. Mm-hmm. I really want to see it. I've I think that's the it. first one. 1945 has got to be like yeah, as one early the, as you go. Right? For when it comes to... Because, I mean... I mean... Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we still did some of them in the '80s, you know, and uh, with Creep Show and Tales from well, the Dark VHS. Side. And, and now they're still. Yeah, I was going to yeah. say they're still Anthology, doing them. You now. just get more bang for your buck. You get Hellbound. like you don't have to like worry about character or development. Southbound. You're just dealing with the setup, the scare, and now it's. I mean, what YouTube, right? We're talking about two minutes. Oh yeah. So like, what awesome. used to yeah. be these uh, full length movies of uh, multiple stories now are like two minute horror, and then like maybe you'll get a full length movie, but the full length movies always suck. Yeah, but I mean, the most extreme version of the two minute one is like the ABCs of Death, right? Where they do an entire, whatever, two minute or two hour movie yeah. that's composed of 26 well, short right. Yeah, yeah there's short that. Films. Well, VHS does it too. You know, they have the shorter stories wrapped in the main story. I, I've seen, well. Viral, yeah, because that's, but, a, if you don't know, that's the rule of the anthologies. You need a wraparound story. You usually have a bunch of characters that go on a train. Or a bunch of characters that get on an elevator for some dumb reason, or a bunch of uh, characters that are walking through a, uh, uh, you know, a uh, uh, catacomb, and then someone ends up like, like that reminds me of a dream I had, you know. <laughs> then everybody like that's strange. I too am haunted by a strange dream, you know. Or you know, people, you, whatever, you know. There's some way to Tile get all the stories the out. This is probably one of my favorite ones. With Peter Cushing is in a. Uh, a, uh, antique store. Antique. No, thank you. Jesus Christ. I was getting there. I was getting there. I stutter on scotch. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say Black Sabbath doesn't have a linking device. Uh, it's, I mean, I guess if you watch the American one, Boris Karloff does the like introductions to mm-hmm. each one, but the Italian one doesn't. And that was 63 or something. So like that's somewhere in the. The the evolution of the anthology movie. I thought we were getting away from the wraparound segments, to be honest with you, because like you I know, mean, uh, Quentin Tarantino did Pulp Fiction, which is an anthology movie where you know that just characters wander in and out of the yeah. individual stories. And but then you have one go. narrative for the whole yeah, movie. It's, it's a layered story where if you just separate, because like at least because I mean VHS to me is like the weakest, where it's like. All the wraparound is is someone goes in a house, sits down, and starts watching movies. I mean, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's yeah, like well, it's barely happened, a wraparound. That's what happened with VHS. Yeah, they went in, they watched the, they were whatever sent to break in to get the tapes, and then yeah. What yeah. about trick or treat or trick or treat? Trick or treat. treat. That was Sam, right? The yeah, little kid that's but running he was around. The final was story, the but but. That he's still the wraparound though, because I mean his tie and all he did was like kill somebody. I mean yeah. that's like oh, I mean it was not. But that's what I like about the anthologies, right? It's like you just get the horror. You don't need to like try and figure out the deeper you know, workings you're of like, the story. It's hey, just an entertaining tale. That's the boyfriend. That's the husband. That's the wife. You know, yeah, like that's yeah. what you need to know. These like basic character and setups. One of them's gonna be dead here in a minute or something, yeah. right? Yeah. And then like, well, from beyond the grave has a very tells in the crypt uh, yeah, type yeah. of uh, thing where. You know, it's all kind of based on a moral. Uh... But that's where I, where I was. I was thinking this while you were talking. It was like, it, but they have like this. They have these character types or whatever in the situation, but it's usually based around some kind of moral uh, imbalance that's set right by the supernatural shows up, and you know. Mm-hmm. Jewish horror stories. <laughs> That's what it is. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so does going? this does this all come from uh, you know? Well, a lot of people like think the it comes tales from the crypt a, comic books. Yeah, or, yeah, basically just because. I mean, radio shows at the time had you know like the shadow, the famous superhero, actually started as a a, a horror host telling stories. So when EC Comics did tales from the crypt, vault of horror, haunt of fear, they just knew like oh shit, you know, just like. Like, we should have a, someone that introduces the story, you know? Mm-hmm. Just a character that, you know, just became this thing. And uh, I'm not necessarily saying that's where movies, like, got the wraparound from. But I think it, um, it I mean, I'm, I, I'm sure it has something of an influence on it. I mean, so, I mean, especially for Amicus. I mean, obviously, if they did the Tells of the Crypt, Vault of Horror movies, and the, it's right. like, it's obviously something they were looking at. And then... I mean, all their movies have the wraparounds. Asylum yeah. has the doctor showing up to interview the separate yeah. people. Yeah, and that's why it's like that evolution can occur while the same crew is working on all the movies. These were two guys, they were two Jew- Jewish guys, weren't they? Max Rosenberg and Milton Sabotsky or whatever? Yeah. Were mm-hmm. the producers on all the, they were amicus, right? Yeah. 
I think can't remember hammer was like a Henry Carreras or something like that, or Michael Carreras or something. So it's like they, the, the movies are really reflective of the guys who were, you know, in charge of running the, the studio, you know? Well, so I suppose that's why, you know, like I'm saying that they, they just kind of kept going back and mining the same structure yeah. for each right. one that they did. Basically, it's like, we haven't hit with right, this one. Right. So we're going to we'll go and just, up a little. Yeah, yeah. Well, we put new well, stories in there. And as I was watching this, I'm, I'm watching, I'm, I'm seeing an influence later on. It remind me a lot of needful things. So I'm thinking Stephen King. Had I was to thinking that this. too. Yeah. I wonder if right? I was Stephen thinking King, that too. He's a horror, uh, or cinephile. Oh, the, just the idea of a haunted, uh, yeah, the devil uh, yeah. being the, the, uh, the, the, yeah, the, the story. Yeah. The Friday, the, the 13th, 13th TV series. series. Oh, it's a good, like this should have been a film series for Amicus, right? From beyond the grave part two, part three, you know, or whatever the hell, right? Mm. Like it would have yeah. been good, but I mean, I but they came they're... up with these awesome titles, the house that dripped blood. Or, yeah. You know, <laughs> Uh, and now the screaming starts. and But I would have to say, not all their stories. Like, I do wish I could take all of Amicus' short stories oh, and make take my the best perfect ones. movie, you know? Because yeah. when you're dealing with these anthology movies, you always have, like, at least three good ones and two or three, like, eh, or sleepers, you know, total sleepers. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Well, you at least have one good one per movie. Usually, if you don't have that, then, you know, nobody remembers your movie years. Mm-hmm. I mean, like, yeah. Trilogy of Terror, right? Everybody remembers the Zuni Doll. Well, because the other two remember stories anything. were yeah, horrible. No, yeah. They the were horrible. <clears throat> yeah. But, uh, I mean, this one actually has some, I mean, this is why, I mean, the the only amicus I own is Tells in the Crypt, Vault of Horror, and From Beyond the Grave, you know? Uh, this has a lot of my favorite stories in it. Well, Plus I, some boring ones like uh, they I don't know. Well, let's start off with the first, first one, one starring David Warner from Ninja Turtles 2. I mean, <laughs> Omen. <laughs> what are you talking about from Scream 2? That's his big no. Scream 2? Tron. Really? Uh, in the Mouth of Madness. <laughs> yep. He was, uh, yeah. A Christmas Carol. David Warner's been it. I mean, oh his God. most famous thing is what? He was the guy who was decapitated in the Omen. Yes. Is that his most famous thing? I think so. Like it's, that, if it's you, up there, yeah. Yeah. I wonder why. We'll I mean, the to... guy's just like a, I don't know. He's just in every movie from well, the yeah. if Time need, Bandits. If you need a, a British guy, he's the guy you stick in. Oh, him or Michael Caine. It's like, yeah. can yeah. you get yeah. David Warner? Yeah. Ah, Michael Caine. <laughs> ah, shit. Exactly. <laughs> and we said yeah. he's still working as far as we know at like 80 or 90 or 100 years old or however he is. He was oh, in was uh, he on... Penny Dreadful uh, the first yeah. season. Yeah. As Van Helsing. Chris, uh... Yeah. So he plays a uh, a guy swinging sixties, swinging seventies. Yeah, yeah. Uh, dude who lives in a British flat. The British. flat. This is whole movie is British, folks. A very well decorated <laughs> flat. He's and, an antique uh, collector, <laughs> which takes him to Temptations Limited. But is he though? Is he a collector? Is he? Or did he just? Well, his, he said he his, knows his antique. But that's place, him ripping the guy. But, okay. but he still knows his. That's how he can rip the guy off is because he knows his antiques. That's why his place is filled with like all these cool antiques. Uh, He's got a bed that looks like Uncle Scrooge's bed. Um. Uh, okay. All right. Maybe. But okay. So this <laughs> sets Uncle Scrooge, up, like I'm talking about Scrooge McDuck. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> well, this <laughs> sets up the uh, <laughs> like what's actually going on in the movie when he visits the Temptations Limited. Temptations Limited. Right. The store. Which, guess what, people. Yeah, and it's run by the uh, the creepy Peter Cushing Peter with Cushing. the uh, the no. great big bushy eyebrows, oh, Mr. Yeah. Mr. Two cheeks, Mr. Yeah. Mr. He'll cut your cheeks. And we said Peter Cushing for those who don't know is Grand Moff Tarkin from the yep. Star Wars movie, he's, Frankenstein. He's if you're a little older than that, yeah. yeah. Um, so anyway, it, each story is sets up some way that the customer who comes in rips off or scams Peter Cushing's character, and then therefore. They have he, some kind of supernatural thing visits them in the story to follow. And he actually kind of like urges it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. He's he happy he when they do just it. Like, well, well, I'll just he leave. tempts them. That's Temptations the whole point. Yeah. 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 Naughty. Yeah. yeah. Naughty. No. Oh, just what the do stuff of it. Yeah. The deuce. So David Warner, his what catches his fancy is an ornate mirror. So this is like the precursor of like Oculus or the Reaper's image or something like that, right? We're going to have a haunted mirror story. He brings it home and he puts it up in his flat. Yeah. Well, we also Which, had a little bit of Little Shop of Horrors, that whole feed me thing. Feed me. Yeah. yeah. Well, we learned about the flat that uh, the thing that amazed me was that the guy, he sleeps in the same room that he has his dining room table. The kitchen's the only room that's separate, right? In the, in the, in the wash closet. 
guess yeah. that's what the wash they, closet. That's what they call that's the, it. the water part. closet. It's, it's not a the studio. WC? The WC. Yeah. Well, because the, the it, kitchen is closed off. It's not a. It's weird. But it's English, know. man. Those people. They you gotta. Want. Yeah, you gotta stack them on top of each other. Well, you're in Europe. swinging London in the seventies. There's they don't have the freedom of America. We. <laughs> Well, there's a lot of people. A lot of people lot of in people. London. So you just pack them in. We do it in New York. You get the brownstones or whatever. Yeah. Sure, yeah. Apartments. But, um, yeah, okay. So this mirror, like, well, this is the thing that, that cracks me up because it's the 70s, right? It's early 70s. So he has some of his pals over, and they are like, wow, you've got this great, awesome, spooky-looking mirror. It looks like it belongs in a medium's parlor. We should let's, have a seance. Let's have a seance. Oh, yes, a seance. <laughs> Was that like a thing? That people yeah. do, they just have spontaneous seances. They do. I've there, never was done that. there was, there a, was lot a lot of, of occult there was, interest. Was there, there was a lot of new agey shit going on yeah. back in yeah. the day. I've never man. done that. People well, were but, very superstitious. But, but it's the end of the. But 60s I don't want to like. The... I don't want to like like blow your cover here or anything. But we were talking a little earlier about how you were kind of churchy. You're not churchy, but kind of whatever. You went to church. You and Colin were talking about it. <laughs> you mentioned how <laughs> you went to church. Did you not? I did. So that's why you wouldn't have a seance or whatever, because you're not like, let's contact spirits. Um, Excuse me. I had a Ouija board when I was a kid. Then okay. why don't you contact spirits? <laughs> yeah. Well, but I think like... <laughs> what's the matter with you? You wouldn't talk to spirits if you had a Ouija board? They at this time, you had... Uh, <laughs> I mean, it was Bradley. like a, a thing that came out of the 60s, right? Because you had the, the whole thing with astrology and everybody's like, what's your sign? You know? Yep. And then you Age had like... Not Aleister Crowley. He would have been oh, dead yeah. by then, no, right? Oh, you did. Well, Anton LaVey. Anton LaVey, right. right. So it was the like The Church this... of Satan was getting into everybody's music and yeah. Led Zeppelin. And... Everybody's very superstitious. So, so yeah, it was just a thing. very conservative, but is that just a British thing? I think, I think they, they all look just look nice. Yeah. yeah, they all okay. wear suits to bed. Yeah, yeah because all the all the teenage girls wore hot pants. No, oh that was God. that was like the, just look at Austin Powers. <laughs> yeah, that's basically the. It's era not that buffoonish. Going. No, the it's colors not that aren't as bright no. as people think they are. It's like no, it's a lot of earth tones, dude. It's a lot of oranges and browns. Talk about the all that stuff's very mod. Yeah, the mod squad. Yeah, okay. but that's like my favorite scene of that story because I actually don't care for that story. But I like when they have the seance. And the camera has the candle, like, Go on, yeah. like placed, like, it's got to be mounted on the camera, right? Because mm-hmm. then it just goes into a circle and follows everybody's faces. Then Yeah, it's like in the center of the table, and it turns a 360, but the, the candle remains in the center mm-hmm. of the frame the entire time. And it's almost like a... Then it's almost like a Disney cartoon where there's like music cues for the flames. Like, that's my favorite <laughs> part of it. <laughs> 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 yeah, that's but awesome. this summons the spirit. That lives in the mirror. And it's Jack the Ripper. Is that who it was? Is that who it was supposed to be? I don't know. It's London. He's that got a sense. vest of knives. Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. It could, yeah. I just took it as Jack the Ripper. <laughs> well, and the funny part, well, no. he played the, the actor. What's it? I can never remember his name. The the main actor. From David, Warner? David Warner? He played Jack the Ripper in uh, Time, Time After, after time. time. Crazy. Yeah. Crazy. Which is a great movie. I want to see that movie. Yeah. Don't spoil it. No. Okay. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So the well, now that you say that, it's like it could be Jack the Ripper. Like, yeah. why not? Who that the fuck else is? That's You're a good in London. It's yeah. a because he talks about like I don't know, whatever. Does he talk about high society? I can't. remember. Well, I remember he says that we sit in high places. Yeah. We are legion. So was and he there's a the demon whole, or was he Jack? Well, the Ripper? no. There's the whole yeah the the whole idea that Jack the Ripper was either a uh, Freemason of or Freemason or yeah. whatever, like either a doctor. Or, oh yeah. Uh, oh yeah. But also yeah, like wasn't he also like either a, I don't know a center. I don't know. Oh, there's Not a whole a bunch of. But yeah, I don't know. Parliament. See, I never. You get You he know was, more about Jack the Ripper than I do. What? Yeah, yeah he was know. like a he was a butcher, a leather worker, a uh, shoe repair dude. Somebody in the palace too. Wasn't he supposed to be a duke or something at one point? They thought. Yeah, I thought he was supposed to be someone in high society. Oh yeah, uh, yeah wasn't was that what the, From uh, Hell was saying? Yeah. Well, that was saying that it was the surgeon uh, William the Gull. Queen. Yeah, of the queen who was treating uh, the queen's son. Oh mm-hmm. yeah, crazy. Anyway. I just took it as Jack the Ripper. Could, but could that's a good be. observation. He's not like I'm Jack, you know. Or whatever. Right. Yeah. So this spirit then, which is a pretty cool effect, like smoke comes up behind the mirror, and you see this guy's spooky reflection. He's all gaunt, you know, and kind of desiccated looking. He's like and, crusty. Yeah. He's Rob Zombie. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because he's got the beard. At the yeah. end of the show, this is exactly what Rob Zombie like aims to look like <laughs> in his shows. That's like, legit. I'm yeah. telling you, man. Like. I'd be surprised if he didn't see that shit like, yeah. 
probably That's did. the Astro Crew. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, this guy demands that David Warner kill uh, women and feed the blood to the well, mirror. And he's not like, why? He's not like, what do I no. get out of yeah. it? He's just not like, all right, sure. You want me to strike some birds? Well, he's under the <laughs> thrall, though. Yeah, like, he... But, Isn't that what but, happened? Like the guy had the the because of the the supernatural the Ouija board or whatever. Sorry, the seance. The candle. Yeah, it <laughs> they opened then the it opened the gateway and now the thing has a thrall like on it because it lives world. in his house. <laughs> 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 Sorry. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That's what's happening. Yeah. Yeah. I got it. Yeah. Because so yeah, suddenly he, goes he wakes up like and he's got dimension. blood all over him and and the guy's like. <clears throat> so do you think yeah. it's when he stabbed him? Is that when he took control of him in the dream? Possibly, it's like either that or whenever he did the the the. Well, because I said thing. to Holly during the the show, I'm like, that's kind of a one sided relationship. I mean, he's not really getting anything out of it. But he's under because he does keep like waking up with his shirt bloody as if he doesn't know. So yeah. well, he's supposed sure. to kind of get yeah. the idea that he's like half out of it. Yeah. Or if he doesn't, kind of possessed, but kind of possessed, yeah. but knows what he's doing. You well, know. yeah, but he I know damn well he can't cover a crime scene because he left blood everywhere. It's because well, he keeps waking up. He's yeah. not even worried about it well, because Jack the Ripper was back in the time where it's like. Yeah, there's blood all over this. It's like, yeah, so yeah. <laughs> and he, Victorian yeah. London. And he yeah. clearly he clearly doesn't remember where he's stashing these bodies. Yeah, yeah well right. that's the thing. The neighbor said, yeah. What's with the pounding at night? Yeah, there's yeah. like a cool neighbor with a cat that looks disapprovingly, like just shakes his head. Yeah, bringing like, all those ladies up there. The birds. Entertaining. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. But you know, to like this I don't know, this is why it's kind of a boring story to me. Like I lo- even though I think that seance scene to me is like one of the most inspirational, like just like, oh my god, just the way the camera pans to all of them and the flame. Right. But the fucking story is just like, all right. Hurry up and get okay. it over with. It's yeah. ghoulish though. It has that kind of spooky quality that the other one, the other subsequent stories lack. Yeah. It's got like the you know, the but ghoulish it, ghost. But it only has a beginning and an ending. There's no middle there. The middle is just like finding horrors yeah. and then like I, even though I do like the one like horror he finds like fancy a lady, you know. Mm. For five quid for unlimited time. What the hell? It was nineteen seventy three. Twenty bucks in yeah, nineteen seventy three. Twenty bucks, that's okay. <laughs> yeah. 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 You can still get Apparently that. she just needed to run a movie yeah. and, get, and get a pizza. She's like, I gotta I gotta blow somebody to uh This was before <laughs> Netflix and chill, so yeah. Well movies cost a lot back then. So they cost a little, it was like a, a pence or something, two pence to get into a movie. Tuppets? So what? Two pence? Tuppets? There we go. Boom. Tuppets? We're working out the Tuppets? English uh, monetary system. <laughs> yeah. He's singing very fast. Yeah, shut up. Oh my God. So the twist shut ending up. to story number one, you ready for this? We're going to spoil it for you. Is that it now satiate, satiated you by get, all the blood? You get to be imprisoned in the mirror. Yeah. <laughs> well, thanks it, for getting me out. Now you go. Yeah, the other dude comes out of the thing. Whoop de do. Oh, perfect. But you're supposed to get the idea that like what well, he likes killing too. Like he Jack the Ripper <laughs> unleashed it in him. I mean, that's the idea of his little speech, I guess, that like you're just like me or something. Well, you will oh, be. That's and the let's, thing. Let's that not forget now you're enlightened. You help me. So now I'm gonna bring you back to well, life no, but, as a ghost later no, on. Yeah, but the idea is that you go to that you go to now. that dark world to get like, you know, you can have your fill for eternity. Blah. Well, and the thing is, let's not forget, the seance scene is then recreated word for word, almost. That's my also. Yeah. That's also my other favorite scene in this, when, like, the person's, like, stri- or, like, you know, uh, the the neighbor has blood dripping from his uh, ceiling, so he finds out, oh, my God, the women have been in the floorboards. That's, you know, he's a stupid criminal from the 1800s or whatever. And, uh, but then, so, uh, Jack the Ripper kills him so he can replace him in the mirror and he can walk free. And then the mirror is just on the wall and you see new painter guys or whatever stripping yeah. it. Yeah. And I like how you You're see looking a, from the point of view of the mirror. Well, and you see a couple of, of, of tenants in between. Uh, that's what I like about it. I like how you see this like, time like is passing. passing yeah. of, I love it. Like I just think that's such a cool scene. And then you finally get the group, hey, let's have a sale. They have the same thing. Like, <laughs> it looks like you'll be in a medium's parlor. <laughs> oh, let's have a sale. Mm-hmm. Oh, bloody awful idea. If only they knew that wouldn't be in vogue in the 1980s or whatever. No, that was the 70s. 
<clears throat> well, I know, but it, it would like totally they... be a Vogue. And if anything, they'd have a chicken to bleed. <laughs> it, was the see... 80s. <laughs> <laughs> it seems like they had like a new tenant every year or something. The fashion stayed the same, but. Well, I don't know, because they look like, at first they looked like a family, and then there was like a lonely old dude, and then it looked like a single dude, then it looked like he got a girlfriend, and then their the friends, friends, you know, they kind of yeah. like show a nice little progression. The progression. Yeah. And then David Warner just comes back in in a cool, like, black shirt, like, all beat Nick. Yeah. He he's coming out of the... Nick. Yeah, he wasn't all creepy. Just beat Nick. <laughs> doom, doom, well, they didn't do his doom, face doom, either. Doom, like, doom. he had been in there a long time. Yeah, I know. I was kind of bummed about that. Yeah, he wasn't ghoulish. Yeah, yeah. 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 should have been ghoulish. Yeah. Yep. yep. Nope. Then coffee shop. Coffee out. shop ghoul. <laughs> That's all that was. <laughs> He'll read you some poetry before yeah. he stabs you to death. Doom, 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 doom. Uh, so our second story. Second story. Oh, it was the second story. Oh, it the, was, uh, the, <laughs> the, it was the one with Donald Pleasance. And, uh, well, that, it was about the guy. It was the more mysterious one, the yeah. husband. Yeah, it, this guy's just, he was a beat down, like, accountant or whatever, some office yeah. job. I love he's got, like, yeah. a like a nasty British wife. Yeah, she's horrible. The kids laugh. The kid laughs at both parents, you know, and he's trying to build himself up, and that's when he goes into the shop. Yeah, he he like used to be in the army, right? So but it was like he like a clerk or something, and and he sees Donald Pleasance um selling matches, lices, matches, yeah, laces, matches. You and can do that. You can make a fortune apparently, just like selling laces and matches on a street corner. There you go. Officially licensed, officially licensed. in London. That's well, he's an ex serviceman. Yeah, and so the husband wants to kind of impress this dude for some reason, right? He just wants to whatever. Well, he, he did have a chest full of metals. So He's I so think. beat down at home that right. he just wants some sort of like recognition, to, yeah, yeah, some appreciation. Some appreciation. Yeah. I like when he freaks out on his wife, like I won't take it, I won't take it. <laughs> and she's like, "You watch what you, s-, you know." It's yeah. like, "God damn, I would kill her." <laughs> yeah, but because I like it, he's like, "I give you a decent allowance, <laughs> you know, and we're even fucking sausage and beans, yeah. you know." Yeah, who knows what a she's decent- doing. Housekeeping allowance. Yeah, yeah. dude. God yeah. damn it. <laughs> oh, those are the days. And uh, <laughs> they were. They were. Don't yeah, lie. so for some reason, so the instrument that he sees at uh, Temptations Limited is a metal. Metal. Distinguished honor. service cross. Right. And so the idea is um, that he's going to, well, he ends up stealing this metal because you can't, uh, this is interesting to learn, but uh, you can't. Uh, Get a medal unless you have the certificate to. Well, you can. It's just Peter Cushing is a uh, you know yeah. straight up dude. Honorable. Yeah, he doesn't want any stolen valor. Because yeah, stolen valor sucks. And because this guy has stolen it, then he's justified. You know, Peter Cushing's supernatural voodoo is justified in giving him his comeuppance. Yeah. Well, and then so well, we almost forgot. Don't forget, there's uh, Andy Cap tying in each story. Every time a customer goes to go in, this skulky guy is hiding up the. The yeah, there's a stairwell. There's a Wait, dude no. that's like uh, very um shifty. Yeah. yeah. And he keeps looking like he wants to go inside, but the new customers uh, a pickpocket of some type. Yeah. It yeah. just looks like a fucking swerve. Hoodlum. 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 Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> so then so, we'll have to defer that to later on, yeah. uh yeah. listeners. I know we're keeping you in suspense, but don't worry, it'll pay off. So, like Chekhov's gun. You know, the husband starts making friendly chat with uh Donald Pleasance about uh his service and uh Donald Pleasance is just sucking up to him, like, like, oh, I knew you were a service, you know, just the look of you, you know, yeah. like, right when I saw you. And he's like, well, do you want to come over to tea, you know, like, I know I got, you know, because, I mean, every day the husband's giving him, like, 30, 60 cents yeah, or whatever. He buys matches, right. buys laces. You know, so yeah. he's also like, dude, come meet my, you know, my daughter, we'll give you tea. That's what, dude, wouldn't it be so easy to pick, like... To, to pick up someone in England because there's always an excuse of coming around for tea. Right. It's like, you know, yeah. it's like we don't drink coffee at fucking 12 o'clock every goddamn or two o'clock. Is that tea time? Two o'clock? One, one o'clock? I don't know. Something, I don't know. It's, High something, tea. it's yeah. something like that, right? Yeah. It's like, oh, that'd be such a good excuse of just meeting someone new, right? Yeah, but yeah. you can ask people out for coffee. I don't fucking drink at coffee. Any time of day. Well, do you drink tea? <laughs> No. Well, what's well, the, so what's the difference? I'm saying, but if there was a designated time in our culture, it lunch would just time. Give you let's an go excuse, to dinner, and you can have cakes. I'm saying yes. Travis. Travis would take one for the team and drink some tea if he could get him a British. Oh, girl. Earl Grey. Yeah. <laughs> so you think if we had designated siesta, you could get more dates? Is what you're saying? I'm just saying it'd be easier to, okay. to because we'd have a. Would you like to have a? Siesta everybody would with have me? the same lunch yeah. time. Yeah. You just have to say, "Hey, you want to have lunch with me?" Everybody has the same lunch time. You fucking come Wait, on. I, we have that now. Okay. Anyway, I'm just whatever. <laughs> I, I tried to say something just kind of fun, and you guys took it in a whole direction. It was made even more even more funny. So uh, anyway, uh. <laughs> 
Right. So the thing about this is that Donald Pleasance's actual daughter then shows up. That in was his movie. daughter in that that story. Well, yes, because she's the Angela. splitting fucking you image. <laughs> oh yeah, I thought. Yeah, I thought she looked like him, but I'm like, uh. she also played the creepy, creepiest ghost of Christmas past I've ever seen yeah. in the George C. Scott yes. Christmas Carol. Really? Yes. Yeah. Oh fuck. Well, because it scared the shit that. out of me when I was a kid. And I'm like, this this ghost isn't too. supposed to be scary, but it's her. Yeah. Cool. She's got a scary looking creepy face. Though. I didn't think she was even in another movie. <laughs> you should watch. That's a good version. George C. Scott's awesome. Crazy. Yeah. Yeah. She's she's, she's frightening. got these piercing. Well, she's got Donald Pleasant's eyes and like a kind she's of a beak that, like, nose and a very pale stare. Skin. And she's yeah. got a five head. It's not a forehead. It's a five head. Oh, yeah. Head. It's it a her, her and Christina Ricci because yeah. they have a battle. They don't have dreams. They have movies. Big forehead. That was yeah. I don't. So yeah, you know, basically, Donna Pleasant's get around to like hooking him up with her daughter, right? He's just yeah. like you know, she'll do anything you want, you know. Which becomes really weird. Like, really yes, really weird. Because she's but, very, dude, very any creepy. guy would be like, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Is that so? You would. <laughs> if any woman's well, like, she was a total just, submissive from uh, the way it seemed, the way they were leading it. Like she was a submissive and he had to command her. He had to command. But, but she's, oh, yeah. she's very creepy. She wanders Doesn't around. Doesn't matter, dude. Like staring I said, at those the, are, those straightening the doilies oh, and singing some singing? creepy song to herself. Singing, was I? I forget yeah. me self yeah. sometimes. Yeah. yeah. That's when I'm I tell you, those, right there. No, yeah. dude, I'm telling you, those are the ones that are good and bad, man. They're just too crazy <laughs> yeah, but to then, be in him. Yeah, dude. but they're also going to pull a knife out from under the pillow and do you an You don't know that. You have to take that <laughs> chance. <laughs> I'm not doing the praying manners, bro. I'm just saying. We uh, knows what we knows and keeps it to ourselves. <laughs> yeah, that's creepy. You sound like an evil hobbit. It's creepy. That's why, you know, that's one of my favorite parts of... Uh, and she is very creepy. So, yeah, for, but he, of course, like, starts uh, coming over every night for dinner until there's the eventual hookup. <laughs> and I like how there's, like, the weird little, like, the wife is on the bus and just, like, a pair of black gloves, like, comes well, and yeah, snips. Yeah, and somebody took, a picture, like, somebody took a picture of her the day That was before. a cool, like, thing, like, yeah, the weirdest thing, someone took a picture of me, I'm like... Must have thought they had the wrong customer. Or yeah, that was like funny. That. Yeah. that was a really funny. Uh, yeah. So they're getting all the. We recognize this as they're collecting all the instruments necessary for some kind of voodoo ritual, right? Which is underscored by the ar- sudden arrival of a gigantic black candle that she pulls out from like the cupboard because that's where you keep your gigantic, like three foot tall. Well, you don't keep it in black the parlor. Mass candle. It's only for mass special occasion. Yeah, it's only for. So I'm, sh- I'm unsure, like, so we've what, heard. what exactly is going on with her. Like, is she governed by some kind of supernatural force? Is she something that Donald Pleasance, like, created into the world for, you know? Well, we don't know. Because she, we th- just it think seems that- like what happens is she is, she has to be direct, like, I will do whatever you tell me to do, but you have to order, order me, me to, to do, do it. it. It has it's to not be a her direct will. command. Right. right? So it she, needs to be... So- is some so, kind of supernatural like, well, thing. Well, that's my question. Is it some kind of a demon thing where that's trapped inside her? That's where you have to command thinking, yeah. it to do what you want done. Almost like a genie type situation. Yeah. Be- well, I don't want to get ahead, but Eat. even the scene, the other thing too is, I mean, when you watch her, when she's given in, she, she's very specific. I'll do anything you want, but you have to tell me exactly he, it, what it's you what, want. But it's what right. he wants. Right. That's the whole point, right? Because the whole struggle between good and evil is your own personal choices, right? So, hey, you want your wife dead? You got to say, I want my wife. I'm not going to. Because he's this very timid dude kind of in a weird way, right? His, yeah. I don't know if his wife has made him timid or beat down or whatever. Yeah, but you, you know, saw his wife. Of course she did. You know, she's trying. Well, because, I mean, yeah, dude, she's a, yeah. Yeah. A little yeah. bit domineering. Oh, I'd like it. <laughs> but okay, now we just we're learning. Wait a minute! Wait a minute! Wait a minute! Let's not get. Let's not get. <laughs> no, no, both, both, no! Because both. two seconds ago you no, said both. you said every guy's as long dream as they've got an accent. <laughs> every guy's dream is a submissive, and now you want the dominant. Okay, Whatever, dude. No, All right, fine. so ladies, if you're listening and you're British and you fit the certain you criteria, go, you have to say deuced. You have to. <laughs> you can get a hold of us, or you can get a hold of Travis at Saturday Night no, Free Show at Yahoo.com. <laughs> Because so, they're going to be like, yeah, they're going to sing and you straighten be, out doilies. And... You have to be submissive and dominant somehow. Isn't that well, what everybody see, wants? Well, but see, here's Both? the thing. Is yeah, the way, exactly. The way Both. he is in life, he's so beat down. He would want to submissive. But then you got guys that are in major power. They're the ones that want the dominatrix. Exactly. It's just, yeah, it's, it's weird. Shit. It's the it's suffering. The yeah, 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 yeah. So I've heard. So I've heard. No, you're you right. don't get pegged, dude. <laughs> and I'm joking. Uh, um, but uh, <laughs> Yeah, we don't do that. All right, so they, the rails. so we use she uses voodoo she she uses voodoo to uh, kill this dude's wife, 
And then immediately, like upon finding oh. her dead, uh, Donald Pleasance is bringing his daughter over and they're playing, and like, uh, playing the wedding march. The wedding yeah. march. Yeah. yeah. Really out of sorts. Weird. Yeah. It was so weird. weird. This is how I was watching like, a British movie effect. I was like, like can we hear souls. that music? <laughs> Da, yeah. Can we only hear that? Da, 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 I think so. I don't think so that was just, but he was in the that was scheduled tables. properly. Yeah. Or, you know, the well, I think that's how you yeah. transition to like a few months later. You know, because then they are getting married. Well, it was a weird way to transition. It was but, very her dad, weird. but her dad was wearing like the coattails. Like he was, yeah, he showed up. Like, right he was in the top yeah. hat. He was, he was like, father of the bride. Well, he's been like he's been like setting this up right, even to the extent where I love when he's like. Going out with the chaps tonight, you know. I'm yeah. like, oh shit, you know. I'll be back around midnight. Well, let's go to that when she does finally submit to this guy. When she, after the supposed sex scene, when she rises up out of the bed like a corpse, that just makes it even creepy. It was the Michael Myers sit up yeah, and turn. It was. The head. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it was it creepy. Was. You couldn't believe a step. She's just fucking creepy. She's creepy. Yeah. So creepy. Okay. Angela Pleasance, if you're out there listening to this, I mean, you're a fine actor. Sorry, yeah, lady. creepy. Creepy. Yeah. So, so, with skin no, on. I, I have to ask. If the submissive thing is every guy's dream, even oh, if Jesus it's even, no, 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 this just, is a different podcast. No, just listen, just listen. <laughs> even if it's someone as creepy as her, that's my question. Oh yeah, you got to roll with it. Travis is right. You got to take. Your you shot. just have to. Even if she's that <laughs> creepy. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah that oh, might yeah. add to. It. My God, you guys are weird. Mm. No, no, not really. We just, there's just one goal. You're missing the end goal. <laughs> just to get, yeah. <laughs> that's the goal. It doesn't <laughs> submissive, uh, dominant. This is why. Oh God, this is such a different podcast. All right. Well, then. Anyway, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Because we got like three more stories to go through. Yeah, we'll get through. So, uh, yeah, they get married, and she's like. Do you want me to cut the cake? Do you really want me to? Do yeah. you? He's like, yeah, fuck. Yeah, get it No, over. what did he do in that one scene where, where, uh, when she does like the oh, candle, yeah. where she like asks him, like, he's like, yeah. Yeah. <sighs> like, you can see it in his voice, like, God He's like, it. do what makes you happy. <laughs> but, okay, anyways, sorry, I, uh, I yeah. forgot that part. I'm... No, it was funny. <laughs> well, he, she ends up slicing the groom yep. uh, little statuette in half, and it kills the and, husband. Well, blood drips out of the little groom on the cake, and then down he goes. Dead of a brain hemorrhage. And See, we always make children's dream or wishes come true. Yeah, and that's just a twist ending, like, out of it the is. fucking blue. Because, yeah. But you see him laughing at his parents fighting at each All other. All the time. It's on so both funny. Sides. It's like, that's almost like the creep show kid to me. Yeah. Right? It's like... But they haven't established. It just felt like it wasn't earned. What? You know, it was but like just him a, laughing. Well, but there's another question. Maybe you not when he that. cried. When the the creep show kid in the end had the voodoo doll. It's almost like I swear these guys watch these movies. And oh yeah, influenced them no oh, doubt. Yeah, about yeah. It. when that was Stephen King. Yeah, exactly. But now that we've established that, the part that I'm confused about is it was this was all the master. Well, not the master, but the wish of this child, right, to yeah. have his yep. parents killed. So why? Did he have to tell, like, why did the, the, the man have to tell her to do things? It was to confuse the audience. That's yeah. it. It's just storytelling. <laughs> there was no... It's just unexplained. I think that's well, a, it's see, a gap again, it comes in down the to, logic. Is it that yeah. They still, like, it, it's either the kid's will or his will. It can't be their own will. They're right. doing magic they on the behalf of somebody else or something like that. It's not their magic. Whatever. I'm blowing this out of my ass. Yeah. So that's what I'm getting right, from though. it. No, it's a good theory. Yeah, I'll go with it. That's all I can do. I don't know. Check the third out. story is like my favorite story, <laughs> probably like of all anthology movies. And that's a dude, he, he steals a snuff, or he trades the price tags on a snuff box. That dirty bastard. That's why when you <laughs> go to like used CD places, they have this... The CDs are the the price stickers that ruin the fucking <laughs> right DVD because case. it's jackasses like that guy. Exactly uh-huh. for the same thing, yeah. motherfuckers. Oh, I hate that. Like, mm. where am I gonna get it? No one sells a single Blu-ray case. You need some goo gone. Goo gone. Yeah. yeah, I still don't like the peanut butter case. Anyway, peanut butter finger case. Anyway, what? Yeah, that's my I don't thing. Know. You gotta use it's enough, enough used goo cases. Gone. Yeah, but uh, so the dude switches prices on a snuff box. Right, simple enough. But I like how when he he like blows out the snuff box, the dust goes up yeah. on his shoulder, and he like yeah. looks at. It. I like that. Like yeah. I actually uh, actually never noticed that before. I was like, oh, that's cool. That's a good because setup. then he's on a train, and there's a hilarious. Psychic. Oh man, she was one of my favorites out of the whole movie. She's a great character, Madame Orloff. Man. Madame Orloff, yeah. dude. Yeah. Like, there's an elemental on your shoulder. A well, big one. Oh, she's awesome. And that is like the focus of this story. Like there is the dude who like gets the demon on his shoulder, the invisible oh, demon that we can't see. Oh, oh. 
so. But Madame Orloff is like, she takes this whole thing yeah. away. I mean, it's right. a showcase for this, this actress. A- What's her name? Margaret Lighton or something like that? Or yeah, we, we have but she box. killed it. I mean, that She's great hilarious. British accent. She just reminded me of somebody that should have been on Bewitched. Yeah. Just that over the top. Yeah, yeah it was right, really give cool. Give us a shot at that accent, Gary. No, not doing Travis it. Travis is going to do it. Go ahead. He can do it. Very well. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so glad you called. There's an elemental on your shoulder. Oh, what? He spat on me, that yeah. damnest. <laughs> she sounds like uh, Monty Python. She does. Awesome, you know what? Yeah. I was thinking about this that. This is a too. comedy break. Yeah. 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 But yeah, I was really. thinking about the Monty Python thing. Like, you know, how, like, the guy in the first uh, episode, when he becomes dead and in the mirror, he sounds like, I am the Grim Reaper. I, yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. You're like, yeah, when you are dead, you have to speak. Like this. Because you're coming from beyond the grave. Oh, dad. English people, man. Yeah. They got it down. They know their movies, right? <laughs> but yeah, so she's, she talks like a Monty Python character, or they talk yeah. like oh, her. Yeah, they she, talk like she's her. That's what an English old lady sounds like. She reminded me of the Oracle Professor from Harry Potter. Mm-hmm. The one that read the tea leaves. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. She, That's what yeah. she reminded me of. Yeah, because again, you have the, the big, big glasses. Uh, yeah. Bowl. Glasses, on, yeah, or magnific- like magnifying. Well, robes. And, and if you yeah. see American Horror Story, cover yeah, the the redhead. She was a lot like her, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So of course the dude doesn't believe her, right? You know, this is a crazy old lady that's like my my fees are very reasonable, you know. And then he goes home to his wife, and I like how like this is an opposite to the uh, story with the you know the overbearing <laughs> wife, where I like how when he comes home from work. His his wife, who is a stay at home wife, comes and she's like, "Oh, dinner's ready. Hey, will you make me a drink or whatever?" And he's like, "The fuck, you know." He has that look on his face, like I'm the one that just got I home. I just got home. Yeah. You know, and she it's like that's a very like woman empowerment like like segment in this story. You know, uh, I always thought that was really funny. And uh, so they go into the kitchen, and he turns away from her, and like she thinks he like hit her or whatever. Yeah. And he's like, "What the? Fuck? You're crazy. I was nowhere near you." You know. And then like later that night. <laughs> like she thinks he's getting straight. I've always liked that scene, you know. She's like, oh, "Honey, you know, you're holding my hand." <laughs> what are you talking about? I'm not even holding. Like, what, what, what right, are you doing? Right. What are you? you know. And then I just like that dynamic change, you know, right. of the yeah. wife. Like, you, you tried to strangle me. Yeah. Well, and when she got hit in the kitchen earlier, then she takes off her shirt off her shoulder. And yeah, the little scratches. Yeah. Because well, this guy me? has he has a homicidal element. <laughs> yes, on and they're his very shoulder. rare. They're very it's rare. Feeding on him. It's <laughs> and go ahead. Oh, well, whatever. I was just gonna continue moving down. Well, the, the only thing that can uh, you can do when you have a homicidal uh, elemental feeding call, on your shoulder is call an expert, and you got to call in Madame Orloff. Yeah, Obviously. Madame Orloff, of course. So she shows up and takes over the entire storyline. And that's when really it is. It's like a set piece, right? Yeah. You got one almost like, I mean, there's different cameras, obviously. But, but the special effects guys are pulling shit off the walls and breaking. There's yeah. a lot of it, too. I mean, because that's what it is. Yeah. It's a comedy bit about this lady exercising this demon out with, like, the environment uh, being affected, right? Yeah. There's a wind machine. The woman gets the, <laughs> or the his wife gets to kind of shriek at the, uh, yeah. you know, things. The and pyrotechnic and Dude, display. like, and the best thing is, like, I mean, Madame Orloff is rhyming all or whatever, you know, demon right. be gone, whatever, but uh, what is she still like, get out of it, you black god in basket. <laughs> yeah. I'll smash your soul out. Like, that is fucking, yep. that whole, the whole story Exorcism is yeah. for that punchline of yeah. her just <laughs> dropping the facade of, like, and then when she, and then when after when she sits down, she's like, oh, I've got to have a break. And, yeah. and then, can you get me a scotch and water? And then as the wife walks away, she tells the husband, oh, that's an attractive I'm like, one. you better watch it. You better like, watch it. They'll be in her like a knife and stuff. butter. She's hot stuff. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. And, like, of course, the, uh, you know, when she finishes, you know, the twist is, uh, that's actually one of my favorite twists, right? Because, you know, they're yeah, like, one of the better because it's such comedy that you don't get horror into no, the last the two very, yep. minutes, like literally yeah. two minutes of horror. And that is just, uh, you if know. If that, it's 30 seconds. Yeah, literally, it's, right? Yeah. Oh, it's but, the zinger ending, right? That yeah, you they find hear out something that, upstairs. He goes yeah. upstairs, falls downstairs pretty like huh, that's kind of like unlike i don't know that's not very like, well but exciting. then i did like that they at least showed the door closing like it went in there with her because you yeah for sure actually yeah. i never actually thought of that i thought they were just trying to make you know like oh supernatural stuff still going on but that's a good idea actually yeah. that that it closes to, and, and then, then she comes out but i've always loved that under no the door you denied me 
my. And that's creepy. The it was look on her face and the voice. She was yeah, super that was creepy. Good. Yeah. Dude, like, yeah, those English ladies, man, when they like get creepy, dude, because then he's like, Helen, what are you talking about? English Helen, ladies, Helen. Yeah. if you're listening, again, you can contact Travis at Saturday Night Freak Show at Yahoo.com. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so the twist is that she's suddenly possessed by the thing, or it's taking or it wanted her. her. So, or, yeah, it's a good thing, hot stuff. it's a good thing they didn't pay. Oh, so you think it's a different one? No, it has no, to be the she same is one, hot says, stuff. That's yeah. why the elemental yeah. wants her. Yeah, it wasn't just gonna kill her, it wanted her to, well, they wanted her body. Holding, she goes, Sometimes they're sexually frustrated or whatever else she said, and then she goes, But these homicidal ones, they're very rare. <laughs> yeah, you know? so I'm sure they had that element. It's almost like your perversions of the elements or whatever. Mm. And then she's like, well, I love the, because, you know, she hits him with a poker, right? If you're yeah. in England, you got to kill your husband, you use your fireplace poker. Right. Well, that's what you do. You don't have guns. And so. then the classic right, door takedown. Oh, that was pretty oh, yeah. nice. Yeah. She just, like, tapped it. Well, I actually like the door falls, falls off. <laughs> when she does her laugh, I don't know why. I love that. It's so striking. That's it's a like, creepy laugh. Dude, that's something, yeah. like I said, that's something English ladies could do because they're so, like, prim and proper that when they actually when get, they like, turned, they're like, <laughs> they're like, oh, my God, it fucks me up, man. It's they're creepy. creepy. It's creepy. But, yeah, though. Yeah, push, push the, the door, door down. It's awesome. Life! Life! So the fourth story? Am I counting yes. right? Fourth. Yeah, yes. The final story, really. Oh okay, gosh. so that was, uh, there's a, a chap, a well-meaning chap who runs into the thief again in the alleyway, but the thief still doesn't, hasn't Indeed. worked up the, uh, <laughs> nope, the courage to go in. to rob people in front of other people. And this guy Good goes job. in, and the interesting thing, because they, now they are, they're playing with the structure of this, because we've seen someone go in, deal with Peter Cushing, steal something, and then leave, or do something bad in right. the store, mm-hmm. which, you know, accounts for what's going to happen to him. This guy goes in and sees this really ornate, well, I mean ornate, but ghoulish, creepy, demonic-looking door that he, like, just has to have it. And he bids Peter Cushing down and gives him some cash. And then, where you know, the camera pans over. Peter Cushing goes in the back to write a receipt. And we see that the cash is still in the cash drawer that he left open intentionally to see, to test this guy's character. Yeah, Yeah, because he's a dick. And then Peter, you know, after the guy leaves, Peter Cushing comes over and starts counting the money. And we don't see the finish of this. No, he goes, we fade out. Yeah. Yeah. I'm like, really? We're going to count to 40? I know. I was like, please don't count to 40. (laughs) It's like English pacing. Sometimes you don't know. Like, Well, that's why I was like, I was confused when I was watching it because I'm like, well, if he just got gypped, then you have to deliver this door. It's not like you walk out with a door under your arm. You know, you have to have it delivered. (laughs) Yeah. You would know if he got railroaded. So, but it fades before we, and then I'm like, okay, this is why we did it later when it finally comes back. But they fade away to the actual story. Dude installs the door in his house. It's a ghost door. Yeah. <laughs> Over his stationary It's a ghost closet. door. Right. Well, it's I a mean, cool door you don't have one of those? Stationary so you closet. keep all your paper and oh, your writing yeah. 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 I have a filing cabinet no. yeah, that I just exactly. stack computer paper inside of. Well, now <laughs> you got to put a ghost door on the right. fucking thing <laughs> to do it door. in the British kind of way. That should be a song. That's my song. It's yeah. a ghost door. So the ghost door changes <laughs> the... Travis uh, Cadaver. <laughs> well, <there>. but remember, <laughs> before we get ahead of that, Peter Cushing, he asked him, he goes, wasn't this on a grand room? And he goes, oh, yeah, I seem to remember it was blue. No, the woman. No, his, but his girlfriend. Cushing said it at first. Oh, did he? At the, yeah, yeah. At the antique Oh, store. that's right. That's right. That's right. It was a grand blue room, yeah. Yep. That's, that's why she was the like, woman, I uh, imagine it was a room that was very grand and had a fireplace and windows. And what color, darling? Blue. And that's what dun, he dun, dun, dun. I won't tell you that that's what the guy said. Yeah. You know, right. like, this is a horror movie with no it dialogue. Turns out that this room, sure enough, he opens the door one day and there's and what is there? A blue, blue room. room. There, owned blue by... room. <laughs> I saw you standing outside. Right. So it's a room that's owned by that's like true. Davy Jones or something. I thought it was right? Bluebeard, right? A Blue fucking beard? pirate. Was he Bluebeard. I don't know. He just look French. I call See, him. Isn't that funny? Don't you think he's a pirate? I always imagine that's a in a pirate. Pirate does ship. Kind of look like he Captain is not Hook. a pirate. But for some reason, you get well, that because I think he's supposed like, to be like like a captain. Yeah, well, I think he's the, the Marquis de Sade. Oh, that could have been. I think he's supposed to be kind of Marquis de Sade because it's like, oh, I, how many people I killed in this room, what I did in this room, like it's haunted and keeps the room alive. You're actually probably right. That's but why I thought it was that but it looks like a pirate. Get up with the, uh, well, the, no, the wig and all well, that. He was totally French. French. You well, could tell he was totally But French. British pirate captains look like that. He was in that powder blue. I don't blue. know. That's what French people look like. He was in okay. that powder blue. He just did not I'm talk like these. Outfit. <laughs> yeah. I am here to haunt you. <laughs> so it's the Marquis de Sade we're saying. I think it is supposed to be like. I don't think so. You guys keep. It's based on, based on, because things are based on things, dude. 
You think it's D'Artagnan? All stories it's are D'Artagnan. All no. stories are psychologically filtered. Other well, to stories me, he looked you've heard very like. French. The, he, the portrait me, looked French. To me, he looked like Louis the Fifteenth. Well, because he's always going to a book. Marquis de Sade wrote a book yeah. about how to fucking torture ladies. I'm aware. We never actually see what <laughs> so, this book is. Uh, it's, it's covered okay, with dust, and he box. keeps coming and <laughs> blowing the dust off of the cover of it. Well, that's like supposed to be what's eerie about it. Because I, I like this story because I think the idea of a door that opens to another room, that's Demen- a cool fucking a story. Yeah. That's but a cool it's also, idea. It's you, an idea. It's not a story. But as an idea, it was kind of like, haven't we seen this story mm. before no. in the first episode where... A no, but this was home. Home. Well, I hated the first story. From, this was a good a version of that living story. Living on the other side of the. No, he side. doesn't bring people to it. The door, the, the, the yeah, door. it wants. This is another haunted yeah, article. It wants, that wants to be fed by women. Well, but the first story sucked. This is a good version of that story. Yeah. It's yeah, just I also that, kind yeah. of boring because nothing happens in it because <laughs> all you're doing is like, oh my God, there's a ghost room. <clears throat> oh, it's one of those good boring well, stories. I'm going to look. Well, no, like, Come with me. Two souls are better than one. Yeah. That's why I've never liked about ghost stories <laughs> or gothic stories is they always have like, isn't this eerie? And I'm like, well, I mean, it's... An hour and a half ago, It's maybe. taking time. Yeah, it's like, it sure is. <laughs> it's suspense. It's suspense. Yeah, it's suspense. I think, but suspense was different to the audience of the day than it is to yeah. us Well, for now. sure. Yeah. Now it's a lot of like, Silence with nothing happening to them. They were probably on pins and needles or making out with their girlfriends and you know what. But this is just him, like so. Like imagine, almost like imagine having a dream where you almost got to read a book, then you left or had to get out for some dumb reason. I can't remember. Oh no, he sees a door start to slowly, like open. Which I would be like, you don't want this door to close while you're in the blue room. Because yeah. you okay. don't know where you are. Or you just don't want to find out what the fuck is behind a goddamn D- cobweb ghost door. door. Oh, yeah, that was the good moment in that, right? Where, like, the handle, the handle was turned. It's like, who's shit? in here? I blew that by saying that Louis V or Marquis de Sade or D'Artagnan <laughs> comes out. Was. But up until he is revealed, it's like, <laughs> who's behind the door in the <laughs> ghost room? Yeah, that was actually... A good yeah. moment. And then, like, so, yeah, eventually he does get to start reading, and he finds out, oh, my God, you know, he does sadistic things to people. That's why I get the Marquis de Sade thing. Right. I get the blue beard because it's blue room. <laughs> uh, <laughs> or blue man group. Either way. Whatever. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, uh, what? Uh, well, well, once his girlfriend becomes, mm-hmm. like, uh, sucked into the, well, I think the, 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 the ghost gets his girlfriend, takes her into the room, entices him into the room to follow, mm-hmm. and then the door is closing. It's like there's a Titanic battle royale where he's like, you know, to his girlfriend, get and that to the is door the before it closes. that is the slowest crawl out of a oh room I've ever seen. Well, like she's she been hurt. hit in the head. Yeah. She was hit. Yeah. She's the lovely Leslie Ann Down, by the way. Yeah. And Leslie I like... Yeah, not Down, not Warren. Right. Okay. And, I, and I like how. Fortunately, he brought an axe with him. Well, he's an axe collector. <laughs> yeah, he had. Them he all has over. like scary doors and antique axes. axes. Well, I mean, as you do, if you're British, that's, that's really... what. What else do you, you have collect. to collect? Torture chamber device. Yeah, it's yeah. like yeah, you're waiting on the guillotine. Well, so that's anyway, French. So how did he wind up stopping him? <laughs> Shut up, Carl. <laughs> uh, well, he takes the axe to the the door. The door yep. by hacking that he it injures the very much like Conan the Destroyer. Yeah. Well, uh, he injures that's how the, you get rid the magical of things, being. magic yeah. things. Yeah, you kill the the possessed item. You, you have kill to the like guy. somehow that was like that used to be the find the girl in the well. well you know, the lay he, the body to rest is you had to destroy the article. Well, and then he's chopping the hinges, which it seemed like that was injuring his spine almost. Like that was the back. It was of cool. The thing. Well, but then you guys caught it. Then the door goes. Did it fall into the room? Yeah. Okay. It falls off. And then what happened? Their normal door. Because you guys door. caught it, so I don't want to say it. You the, guys are the ones that caught it. The normal door is left on there. Yeah. But that's yeah. just so I don't know what the yeah. fuck. Well, here's the one thing I took away from the whole end of that story was he didn't steal. That's why he's the one that lived. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, that's yeah, why they wrong. cut back to Peter Cushing qu- counting his cash. Fuck. And we're like, oh, that's the end of that. And he's like, oh, yeah. look at that. He gave me the money that he told me he was going Wasn't to. Wasn't that so. kind of scary? Not really. No. Yeah, but I liked it. Yeah. <laughs> I did like that. So they just could have come up with something to do. Like if there was either some way, because I mean they didn't do any sort of like he finds out the door can it hurt this thing or can affect the room. Like if he would have accidentally scratched the door and seen something crack, mm-hmm. right, or some shit like that could have made up the kind like of the door and the destroyer of the. If every story is three acts, even if you're doing a fucking fifteen minute or thirty minute story, it's like but some of these some acts. of these don't have. Yeah. Some of these don't have, uh, they just have a first and a third act. Right. They don't have that second. The second act is just like, suspense, suspense, it's blue. Yeah. 
But then I know we've been keeping you in suspense, listener. The thief eventually makes his way into the shop. What does he steal? Uh, he's well, just he gonna really, like get the till. He's, yeah, he's he takes the pistols from Peter Cushing. Yeah. Because once again, uh, he tempts him by handing over the pistols. Dueling pistols. Probably not a good idea to give it to a man of uh, why are re- they loaded? Reputable re- they are loaded. Repute. I said, why are they loaded? Because they're uh, supernatural. <laughs> yeah. Because oh. they're haunted. <laughs> so haunted the idea is, so we don't actually loaded. see yeah. where this story goes. This is where Peter well, Cushing talks to the camera and basically says... Well, we do. We see him <clears throat> fall into the... Oh, shit, that's the right. The nail box. Yes. Yeah, you're, you're right. Because he, like right he's backing up and he's trying to shoot at Peter Cushing and it's not working, so he yeah. just throws the pistols at him. And also, Peter Cushing takes a good hit. Not, yeah. yeah. Right? It looks like Peter Cushing is like, if that wasn't rubber... Which made me nervous, because he's a fragile old man. I know, right? At this point, it's like... <laughs> I think he died three years after. No, he made Star Wars after this. Yeah. yeah. Right after this. Yeah. He kept going. Well, in 77, yeah. Yeah. Or and then he did Shockwaves in like 80. He was still playing oh, Sherlock no shit. Holmes. Shock, well, no shit. Yeah. But, yeah. The guy falls into the, what the, the box. The it nail called? box. Ha <laughs> ha. I like that nail box. What's the name for it? What's it called? I thought it was a oh, coffin. No, well, people You're saying call it's like an a Iron steamer Maiden. trip. I mean, Iron steamer Maiden trunk. is the yeah, type Iron of Maiden. trunk with the spikes. Iron Maiden's the stand-up. But like, I don't know. I mean, yeah. could you consider all of that type of thing an Iron Maiden? I don't know. I don't She's know. She's it was a box that was full of nails. Yeah. It was like a hope chest with like but, nails but like poking. So like that, kind of like Iron Maiden. That's right. Dude falls into it. Something like that. And then did Peter Cushing sit on it? No, I, did he that's, sit on it? it oh, he that's what, to the door that's what it looked speech. like. Yeah, yeah, he walked to the door and said, no, "Like, oh, minute, more put, customers." But for a minute, he put the hat on the skeleton. It looked like he sat down on it. No. Well, he like hmm. you didn't see the that. Door. I don't recall. He did. No, he did. He so went he right was, to the door because he opened the door like, "Oh, more customers." You know, no, I remember something that. Something to tempt you. Blah, 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 blah. As he's talking directly at the camera and the audience, just like you have to, you have to tell them like, "Boo," or whatever. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then the music comes in. Mm-hmm. Yep, and, and, and then that, you're out. That was it for Amicus Anthology Horrors, and uh, yeah, it's gonna be on the grave. The All end right. of that movie. Well, I'll tell you what, listener, if you've stuck with us this long, we're gonna tell you what we each thought of our final review and our wrap ups. But first of all, before we get to that, we're gonna answer some viewer mail. So, Igor, where are you, sir? Igor. 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 Masters, masters, the mail. I've got the mail. So many letters. Our followers are rising, rising. See, when Sean's not here, we really miss the clapping. He's a little more enthusiastic. Yeah, than that. is there clapping? He can always. Yeah, he, he's like, Igor. Yeah, every time. Mm. All right. So <laughs> again, if you want to get a hold of us, and we hope that you will, join the Freak Show family. You yes. can get us on our join Facebook us. page, Facebook gooba page, gooba, 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 at uh, facebookcom slash Saturday Night Freak Show. Also on Twitter at Sat Freak Show, and by email Saturday Night Freak Show at yahoo.com. Michaela Tyson, who was a guest on last week's Michaela. episode, writes in and says, "Which." Pleasance is better in this anthology. Donald or his daughter, Angela? Oh, Angela. His daughter. She's scary. Michaela actually knows what the title is for that segment. Did you know that they have story titles? Holy funk. That one was called An Act of Kindness. Crazy. Uh This is your favorite movie. But I don't (laughs) dig into, like... You know, nerd shit. <laughs> Man, I'm joking. I'm gonna say like, it's not in the credits. I went, you know, I mean, this all these stories are based off an author's short stories, which I did not do any research on. Is he an author? Is he a guy who wrote like some I don't stories know. that they bought? To... Said, uh, yeah, I don't know. How does she know? This is like based on a did she say? Uh, here it says, <laughs> and I know this because. No. Uh, oh, fuck, come on. So what are we saying? We're going around the table. We're saying Angela Pleasance, right? Yeah, is the she was more, creepy as hell. I am. Is better because she made a goddamn impression. Isn't that right, Gary? Yeah, she's creepy as hell. Yeah. Uh, Bobette Georgie Bobette. says, Bobette. I love the horror anthologies. You cannot make me choose just one as far as which one's your favorite. I think that's what I asked on Facebook. I said, uh, which one's your yes. favorite anthology? Uh, Jacob Laws writes in and says, Tales from the Hood. Is very good. Nice. Well, the doo doo. I brought that up earlier. And uh, back, uh, this is a comment uh, from Karate Warrior 2 on Twitter about our Return of the Living Dead 3 episode that we did two episodes ago. Yeah. Uh, so, in that episode, if you recall, 
Holly couldn't believe that men would find a uh, sexy zombie attractive. Mm-hmm, 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 and Karate mm-hmm, Warrior mm-hmm. 2 says, I agree. Yes. Legitimate goth is not my style. Hashtag I'm with Holly on this one. Uh, that makes me real goth, guys. So there you go. I'm going to start wearing <laughs> mascara. Yeah, but I don't think you're going to start running She's plate dead. blast through you. Well, I might put on some fishnets. Oh, well, okay. Yeah. You're, you're a couple decades. Let me know when that it. show is because I'm showing up for that one. <laughs> Piercings, fishnets, fine. She's dead. Gross. But as Travis has already pointed out, those are the crazy ones. Those are the crazy ones. Those dude. Are the... Dead girls? Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, I assume they're the craziest of all. Of the, yeah, the you wildest because they're dead. Uh, wait, you guys hear that sound? That must be the sound of wrap ups. Oh my god. The hour has come, sirs. Thank you, Lurk. That's our butler, by the way, Lurk. Lurk is the butler. And a part of the facility. Uh, We can't get rid of him even if we tried. So, wrap ups on uh, From Beyond the Grave. Get rid of us. Colin. Why don't you start us off with the wrap-ups? Oh, yeah. uh, why don't you? So this is Travis's favorite movie, and he watches. I didn't it say it was my favorite every movie. Halloween. It's his favorite Halloween don't movie. Don't quote me, motherfucker. Well, because I had like a passing relationship with this movie, but like since I have known you, like I've seen this movie more than I than any other Amicus movie, because somehow it just keeps on popping up. I love this. <laughs> um. So it's hard to judge an anthology movie overall. You really do. It feels like it's like you have to judge them based on the quality of the individual stories. Right. It, you know, I mean, I guess a good anthology movie is one that has. What, what are we going with an average three out of five? You got to have at yeah, least gotta, three good yeah, stories. You got to be on the plus side. Yeah. You're a great anthology. If you got five awesome stories, right. I really like creep show. Because yeah. I like all five of those for, you know. You it's know. like you got to have one really good one and then a couple pretty good ones at least. Yeah. Well, I think the good one in this one, I thought it started off with a pretty strong one. I disagree with Travis on that right. if, because I like this, the ghoulish, spooky David Warner haunted mirror one. And then I think either because I like that story, then the haunted door also kind of worked for me, except for the reveal of the whatever the ghost was. Wasn't as good as the ghost from the the haunted mirror, right? You got to f- switch the ghosts or something on that one. Uh, the the comedy one with the uh, the the seance lady, Madame Orloff, is mm-hmm. always. I thought I always thought that was the weakest one, but now I'm like, is, maybe it was the Donald Pleasance one. But Angela Pleasance, Pleasance is so creepy in that. But there's not really a whole lot there. I don't understand what's going on as far as like what the rules are that govern this kind of voodoo witchcraft, whatever the hell they have going on. And I don't understand. The ending just comes out of the blue. Like, Hey, Timmy, we did this all for you. <laughs> Isn't that fantastic? <laughs> it doesn't feel like it was like set up or earned in any way. So I'm going to say that was the weakest one. Uh, and then the, the comedy one played better to me this time than it has any previous time. I'm like, okay, yeah, I get it. But the downside, I guess, to the whole... So I'm, I'm going to say there's two good ones. One... No, two pretty good ones. One decent one and one bad one out of four. Uh, so I'm going to say I'm recommending the movie based on that, right? Based on my criteria that I laid out before. Yeah. But the thing you have to understand is the pacing of the movie to a modern viewer, I think, is kind of, you know lethargic right there's a lot of dead space where even in the good stories where you're just kind of like okay let's pick up the pace and let's do something mm-hmm. now you know can i fault the movie that at the time it was made that was the the that's thing gonna of the be time. my question do you think it's a, a generation thing or or even mtv it ruined it all uh, yeah or, or even do you think it's um not i'm um, We've been conditioned to, to learning, you know, we're more sophisticated. Yeah. We're a little bit of stuff faster. We mm-hmm. can interpret because I think MTV think changed the world. Do you world. think it's maybe a cultural thing, too? I mean, British is known for being a little drier. Do you think that had something to do with it? As far as what they, as the humor? Well, just in general, there's just a um, a calmness to British Media, I guess. Or sadness, uh, however you want to look at there, it. I don't know really how to describe it. There's a, there's a feeling in British media that we don't, that isn't really in American media. 
No, yeah, but I think some of that's the flavor that gives you, you know, it's why you go to McDonald's over Burger King. Right. Company. They're, they're both English speaking, right? Which yeah. is the thing about American and British stuff. And I suppose Australian stuff also, mm-hmm. it's like, or New Zealand, you know, there's the, everybody speaks a common tongue. Mm-hmm. So it's just like these little cultural differences is the spice, you know, the flavoring that, you yeah. know makes it interesting and i mean i like british cinema a lot mm-hmm. horror cinema specifically mm-hmm. a lot i'm a big fan of hammer mm-hmm. you know some other classic uh british you know movies and then the amicus stuff i don't like as much as hammer because it feels like they did do like a lot of the anthology stuff where it's like okay it's a bunch of short stories over and over again and you'd mm-hmm. get like you know at least the one good one that you remember out of the batch right um but uh i don't know to your question yeah, I think that's the answer, right? Did I answer? It? Yeah, I think. Yeah, so I think I would recommend it. Um, it's a, it's a, it's a pretty decent anthology movie. You just have to be aware. I think as a modern viewer, that it's going to be, you know, maybe not as exciting as some of the right. late later day ones. Gary, uh, well, see, I grew up with the creature features and all that kind of thing. That was my Friday night and Saturday afternoons was watching those kind of movies. So when these started coming along, at that time, these were like really super scary, creepy, you know, because I'm used to Universal, the bad giant spider movies from the 50s, you know. So so watching all this kind of stuff, especially I can bring that back to when I was a kid. I remember how much I enjoyed it. Oh, I don't yeah. think it ages well, but I did like the stories. I, I like the, the morals, I guess. And I guess watching this thing, my biggest thing is seeing all the influences or at least what I think were influences that, cre- you know, helped other movies later on. Needful Things, uh, just there was different movies. And you're watching, and you're like, they did that, and they did this. And you can see it. So the same guys, King and all that, they grew up watching all this stuff. Right, yeah, definitely. And well, uh, he was writing at that time, I think. But it was, you know, it was, yeah. he was in his teens or early 20s. Right, I think. so he's doing short stories, things like this. Mm-hmm. Now, and again, I do like the short stories. I think Travis hit it right on the head when he said, you don't have to worry about the character development. It's just this nice little ride. You know, just go for the ride, see what the story is. That's it. You don't have to worry about, well, she's related to this guy two times over whatever. This was her ancient ancestor. They don't get into all that. It's just, <laughs> look, we're going to kill you through the door. Unless That's it is her ancient go. ancestor. Yeah. But I'm just, so I, I do like the story. I enjoyed the movie. I had never seen it before until today. Uh, there were parts that drug on, but I think that was just the time. That was how they did things. You know, now, like the era that are in which Yeah, I mean, look made. at what Bloody Cuts is doing now. They're throwing out oh, yeah. know, short movies that are just awesome, you know? Yeah. So... And, and that's British. So it's just, it. but again. That's like their taken, heritage, right? Right. Like, because Dead of Night was a British thing. Like, the anthology movie really is like a British the anthology well, horror movie. Like Travis said, they're doing mm-hmm. shorter and thing. shorter movies. I go on YouTube all the time. I, I t- say this now. I have ADD when it comes to watching things because I went from movies to one-hour programs to half-hour documentaries. Now I'm watching two-minute oh. short films. <laughs> and that's all I can do. I cannot devote time anymore. It doesn't seem like. So, oh, but I've been especially if the idea is not horror. worth it, <laughs> right? If it's just like evil doll, yeah. Da, 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 it's just like well, get to it. I don't well, need exactly. to fucking know like oh they're having a bad marriage. Yeah. And now like, I don't give a wasted, shit. Now I've only wasted three minutes, not an hour and a half. <laughs> yeah, you know. So I, I guess I can see it. Uh, the anthology movies, the, the older ones, especially, or the not older ones, but ones that came after, I should say. Uh, you can definitely see the inspiration in it. I actually like the movie. If you're into that era's horror movies, if you came up watching the old, you know, Universal and the 50s sci-fi movies, check it out. I like the movie. I'd give it a thumbs up. All right. Um, yeah, I, I didn't really, I didn't really know. I I knew nothing of this movie, actually, when we went into it. But um, so I was a little thrown off when it just, it jumped right in. Like, it, obviously, they're short stories, so it, it jumps right into the story. And, um, that was something I had to get used to because I, I don't know, I'm more of a romantic, so I do like the literature of, of a movie. I like the exposition. I like the, the writing. I like the little stories, the character development. Um, so I had to kind of wrap my head around them. Like, okay, this is going to be short. There's not going to be a lot of character detail. So throw that out. It's fun. This, this was really fun to watch. Um. I, I didn't really care for the first one, to be honest. I thought it, it drug quite a bit. I was kind of just waiting for it to get better 
and it didn't really. Like, where's the twist? Yeah. I just want to get to the twist. I know. Well, I was like, it. there's, there's got to be something like that's. I mean, he's killing people for this thing in the mirror. I get it. I get it. What's gonna? And that's all it was. <laughs> I was well, waiting you're traditionally for supposed to save your best one for last, right? In an anthology movie, you kind yeah. of ra- you're supposed to ramp up to the best one. Yeah, in theory, maybe. Yeah. Well, if they're doing anything right, maybe. Yeah. In theory, I mean, but... I, none of them do that really. The best I, one's yeah. always like either the third or the fourth. I mean, Black Sabbath. Well, the <laughs> Italian cut, not the American. I was gonna say the crate creep show is the best story. Maybe grandfather. I don't know. I can't make this up. <laughs> sorry. No, you're sorry, fine, you're yeah, fine. sorry. It's gonna... okay. It's okay. <laughs> it's exciting for you. I get it. Um, I disagree with Colin. I didn't think the 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 ghost was very ghoulish. I thought he was just kind of there. I don't but know. But he talked like this. Yeah, you're I don't okay, care. Fine. Rob Zombie. <laughs> yeah, he didn't really do it for me. I didn't think he was creepy. Burned so the, the but the um. <laughs> I heard that on the way here on the radio. <laughs> um, I liked, I, I really liked the, uh, the second story. I thought it was like, I thought it was really creepy with the, oh, yeah, right. yeah. Yeah. The husband, <laughs> the pleasant. Yeah. I thought it was super creepy. I, maybe it was, and just, it was the most character. It was the most, you character, know, which, the mo- yeah. like, you know more about those people than any others, which is in the probably stories. why I enjoyed it so much. Right? Right? Yeah. You know a lot about the characters. I thought it was creepy as hell. And I did not know where they were going with it, but um, I thought it was really cool. I, I really liked that one. It was creepy. Um, the third one I thought was hilarious. That that chick is so funny. <laughs> I was laughing my ass off during this. Um, That's true. I heard her. Yeah, yeah. I was laughing so hard. She was hilarious. And I, I liked the twist. Um, the last story, I didn't really care for either. It was... It did remind me a lot of the first one, and it was just kind of disappointing. Like, I wanted more of it. Uh, the ghost room, I don't know. It was just kind of Like, you could use lacking. the movie? Like, the full-length movie? Mm, well, <laughs> not that movie. <laughs> no, it just kind of lacked any suspense for me. Um, but, yeah, I liked that. So... Yeah, it kind of bookended it. I didn't really care for the first one or the last one, but the two in the middle I thought were really good. It was very entertaining. Um, so, yeah, I think I would still recommend it. Just get through the first and the last, but the middle is pretty good. I really think, I mean, I actually agree with Holly. I think you do have to just get through the first and the last. Just because yeah. those are the only ones that don't have a middle. It's like they know their beginnings, they know their endings, you know. They both, like, it's an item that they have to destroy or whatever the fuck. I mean... One guy gets away, one guy doesn't, right? But I do like the last story because it's very gothic. The room with all the fucking... You know, I don't ever really refer to liking gothic horror or whatever. I like the idea of gothic horror. I like the art of gothic horror. But the actual, like... I don't really care a lot for, like, a lot of Hammer movies. I don't care for a lot of that old styly, like, whatever, like... That's what I liked the idea of the ghost room. But that's what yeah. I like about it. I like yeah. the concept of the horror story. Like yeah. you buy a fucking door that opens to another room. It's that's cool, cool a story, man. Like yeah. that's what you get out of anthology movies. You get the nuggets of the story. You get the meat of the horror. You, you know. That's what they're going you for. Like the everybody, nibble. somebody will like something in an anthology. And yeah. it's a roller coaster. You're not stuck with one yeah. story. But it know? also the the downside that I always hear like in criticism of anthology movies is that you always have to like, you know, set all the characters up, build and then chop it off with the ending, then start all over again. And like how much patience does an audience have? <clears throat> like cuz you don't know, you can't tell how long you've been in the movie. Right. You know, except for like how many of these have we fucking seen yeah. already? Yeah. You know? For sure. You assume that they're it, playing fair and they're all about the same amount of time. It's, it's but a really, it's a really weird short? balance. They have to find a way to give you exactly as much as you want. But that it's is so, why it's so weird. Yeah. Like the second, the story of the of the of the husband meeting, uh, whatever, and uh, the third story of the. It's like those are the stories that actually have a beginning, middle, and end. Yes. Yeah. Those things. It's like. It's like. You know, uh, uh, you know, lady sees him on a train. The thing attacks his wife. They call for the exorcism. You know, there's your arc. You know, there's your three part arc that you can you could just feel that in that story. It feels like a, a you know, it's not a long story. It's not complicated, but it's contained. 
Mm-hmm. It, you know, it has their thing, you know? It's structured. Yeah. yeah. Where yeah. the other ones, it's like, they're just missing the middle. It's like, it's like in the first story, the middle is just like, well, he has to kill a bunch of women. So it's just like, we'll just do that over and over and over again. Well, it'd be we'll- awesome if it was gory. If they had visual effects or makeup effects at the time. Maybe, maybe, if I don't know. Maybe if it wasn't such a dream. Because I think the reason why this is such a sleepy movie, like you, like, even though I love this fucking movie, you will fall asleep (laughs) because there's so many dreamy type sequences. Like, I don't know. A lot of this movie is very dreamy or, you know, even in the husband and wife, you know, the woman has a bad dream. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I think, I think the comedy story is the only thing that is like, Pretty upbeat the whole. I mean, the whole yeah. story. It's just up- it kept my attention the it's whole just time. It's upbeat. It's funny. Every fucking thing she said. I didn't I have just- any questions after that story. That's that's the point. I didn't have any questions because it's that really story. unimportant. Yeah. Like where the elemental comes from, yeah. how it worked. Like the thing you were talking about, how like the uh, the uh, the the. Like the magic or whatever of the second story. How, like, I don't need it. It's like, that's the third one. It's like, you don't need to know those stories. It's like, it's all about this quirky ass psychic lady. You yeah. know, that's all it is. But yeah, I love this movie. I love anthology movies. Um, Just get more bang for your buck. Uh, Stay away from monkey paw uh, stories. <laughs> the only thing that sucks about anthology movies, monkey paw stories. Uh, but yeah, I love this fucking movie. Um, and I'll watch it every Halloween till the day I die. That's very Whoa. true. Very true. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to tell you what Sean's going to pick next week. But oh before God. I do, I'm going to remind you again that you can go to Facebook, uh, our page and recommend a movie that you want us to review. And we're going to probably look at it. You can get us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, we'll have some kind of process set up, but we are going to watch your movies and we want you to tell us what you want us to review yes. on Facebook next week. It's Sean's pick. Sean hasn't been with us for how many weeks? Fuck, I don't know. Fucking yeah. Cubs ruining Halloween. So Igor really misses him. He sits right. at the window waiting for him. Very true. Yeah. So, uh, he says, we're going to watch Texas Chainsaw Massacre, the next generation. Oh, oh. I don't Sean. think I'll be here. <laughs> <laughs> so that's next week on the Saturday Night Freak Show. And until then, ladies and germs, the basement is going dark. <laughs> <laughs>